your top strengths serve you the best. But did you know they can also hold you back? And here are some examples of how that could be. So with this one, strategic is first. Think, create, learn, come up with a plan, but the way it can hold you back is to think that you don't quite have the plan yet. Oh, I don't quite have the plan yet. I gotta think about it more. I gotta learn more about this. I have to be more creative in my approach to it. And if you keep going on that perpetual cycle of it's not quite right yet, then that's where strategic can hold you back, that line of thinking from where it is that you wanna go. So it's very important to know how to use all of your strengths together in conjunction with one another so that you can actually get where it is that you wanna be in life. The second one here is empathy. So a way that that can hold you back is by worrying too much what other people are thinking, or more importantly, thinking you know what they're feeling about you, your plan, your ideas, where it is you wanna go and what it is you wanna do. You're putting too much stock in your assumption that you know what they're feeling about that and that can hold you back. The next one is an election. A way that this can hold you back is that deep need to, to go really um, introspective and peel back the layers of yourself. You can get too caught up in thinking that there's too much analyzing, self-analyzing that needs to be done yet, or too much personal development. Hey, maybe I've read these personal development books and I really haven't quite implemented them yet. I have to go deeper in what that means about me before I can start to go where it is that I wanna go. So those things all serve you well to a certain point. And again, not when it's used by itself, when it's used in flow or fluidity with the other strengths as well. So it's very important to have a mindfulness perspective on how you're using all of these. The next one is context. You appreciate the past and you have value for history and how things have always been done. But as you guessed it, that can hold you back from trying something new, from stepping out of your comfort zone, from maybe pushing the envelope just a little too far from what you're used to and what has always been going on. So again, use that appreciation, use that knowledge of things that you've learned from, from the past, but don't let it get you stuck in the past. And then the next one is maximizer always push into that next level. You're all about betterment. When you're in your comfort zone, that's easy to do because you know how to do it and you know how it, what it feels like to achieve that. But when you're doing something new or you're stretching out side of that comfort zone, that can be a little bit scary. And so that maximizer strength could potentially hold you back because you think, well, I'm never gonna be able to get to that point. That's way beyond me, so why even try? I'm not enough. And that's where you get into the tunnels of some of these. And when I go through these with my clients, I make sure that we talk about the bridges, all the amazing things and what to lean into, but these tunnels, these mindfulness perspectives, just to keep in mind in that self-awareness, so that way when you're moving forward with something, you can use them in a way that benefits you instead of a way that lets you have an excuse to keep you held back. The next one is connectedness. Everything happens for a reason. It's all meant to be. It's up to the universe. With that one, you can potentially get held back by just not having ownership. I'll just let the universe figure out when this is best for me. I'll just go and see um, what's gonna happen. And you know what, whatever does happen, it's meant to be. So you're not necessarily, um, again, taking ownership and actually doing something 
to push it. So the best way that connectedness shows up for you is when you are implementing your plan, you are leaning into some of your strengths and you're going for something in life that you really want to do. And then if something inevitably, as it always does, comes up that isn't according to your plan, this can help you put in perspective. All right, hey, it's okay. This was meant to be. What can I learn from this? How can I adjust? And now I can keep going on maybe just a little bit different route with it. So it can't hold you back from trying or it shouldn't, often it can and does, but the best way to utilize it is after you're pushing yourself and you're going forward with where it is that you wanna be in life, let it help you feel okay with how that unfolds for you. Um, the next one is developer. You see potential in other people and you're very encouraging of it and you want to cultivate it, do this for yourself as well. One of the very important things about the relationship building strengths in particular is that you implement them inward as much as your desire is to do that outward. So if you would say to a friend or a partner or somebody that you really care about, that all the wonderful things that you see about them and that you know you can do it. And when you have developer high, you are very honest and sincere with these um, potentials and with these compliments that you're giving them. Be honest and sincere with the wonderful things that you see in yourself as well. So try to pull that out of you so that it's not held back because, um, well, I don't really see that in myself, but I see it in all these other people. So they, they are the ones that can do all of this. Turn it into you as well to help you move forward and gain that confidence that you need to push the envelope a little bit further. And then input. You're gathering all the resources, you're gathering information, you're holding on to it, storing it away to be able to share with other people and other situations. Again, turn it to yourself. Turn to yourself for the resources that you have collected with other people in mind and use them for you and where you wanna go and what it is that you wanna do in life. Um, and again, if you feel like you just aren't quite there and you don't quite know it, tap into even more resources, just as you would if it were somebody else that came to you asking for information. Um, and then ideation, big, broad, wide thinker, daydreams, comes up with all kinds of awesome, innovative, exciting ideas. And often the ideas can be enough for somebody who has ideation high. They don't always have to see them to fruition. But if those ideas are in correlation with the plan that you have for yourself, then do what you need to do to go for them. Make those dreams come true. Don't hide behind the fact that it's okay if I just have the idea that's enough for me. Some of them, yes, but others, mm -mm, that's a cop out. You have to let those dreams come to life. And then the last one is individualization. And this is where you um, naturally see the uniqueness and the differences and you find so much of value in those differences and these can come in other people or other situations. Again, turn this to yourself. Appreciate the fact that you are unique. You have something to offer somebody else that they wouldn't have if you didn't step up and put yourself out there and let them know about it. Be proud of your differences. Be proud of your own way of thinking and doing things and coming up with such amazing creative ideas that can benefit this world if you just let them out. But if you stay where you're hesitating, then nobody benefits, including you.